Today's episode is sponsored by Rival Fantasy, your all-in-one sports fantasy platform. Make sure to check out RivalFantasy.com or download the Rival Fantasy app using code REALTALKBASEBALL. Fantasy baseball is what our show is all about, and Rival Fantasy's unique sports betting platform includes best ball, fantasy bingo, daily and weekly drafts, and daily challenges. When you use the code REALTALKBASEBALL, Rival Fantasy will match your first deposit up to $200. If it comes to the point where I see Matt Olson there and I know yeah. that Bryce Harper and Pete Alonso are still waiting in the wings, like maybe a round or two later, I think I'm passing on Matt Olson. They're okay, hearing home run after home run after home run. I was like, holy crap, like it's the old Altuve, you know? And I'm going after guys like Austin Riley that's going to hit close to 40 home runs with a decent batting. Average. It has nothing to do with the luxury tax or any of that stuff, dude. It's just the owners want to bring a champion to a team. They're going to do whatever it takes. Welcome, everyone, to Real Talk Fantasy Baseball. I am Will Power, and with me, as always, is Javi the Commission. What's up, Javi? How you doing today, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? Uh, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm glad the, the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer over here on the East Coast. The yeah. The winter was it was a little little brutal this year. You know, we didn't really get much snow, but uh, it was that, that wind chill, man. On, on the days when it's like... 35 degrees and and that 10 mile an hour wind hits you it it gets your yeah. to your bones man i i just hate the inconsistency of this damn weather bro like one day it's like 70 it's fucking beautiful and the next day it's raining and it's yes. cold and i'm like dude i miss my cali weather <laughs> yeah seriously well actually california is not too much better than we are right now yeah man. yeah i heard it's pouring over there dude like the the past couple of dodger games were on rain delays for like an hour and i was like what the heck that never happens <laughs> no i guess it's good though Weird. right california yeah. is always out so they could definitely use the water i even yeah, remember uh, like people talking about california was gonna start getting their water like from colorado like they were actually gonna like build like a uh, like piping that goes from colorado into california just to get like drinking water and you know yeah. water in so uh, it doesn't crazy. look like it's that anymore. I wonder what the LA River looks like right now. I haven't seen that in a cool minute. Yeah, right. I I have no idea. All the bums are out of there. <laughs> All right, exactly. So for those that don't know what the LA River is, watch the movie Grease and uh and the scene where Danny is racing against racing. like the, the leader of like the other gang or or whatever, like that that like um like tunnel or whatever that they're racing in, that's the LA river. And as you can see, it's pretty dry in there. There was like little puddles or whatever, but lately California has been, the precipitation has been crazy and uh, the LA river has actually overflowed and the water's actually been going onto the highways and people have been getting stuck and crazy stuff, man. But Hey, we're out of there. We don't have to deal with that. You know, we, <laughs> at least over here, like people are prepared for it. I remember a few years ago, um it, it started raining a, in california and uh and the the sewer systems over there are not like they're not made for the type of water that california would get like they are kind of like yeah. getting right now and it would just overflow um my parents house it like the whole like first floor like the carpet just got completely drenched they had to rip it all out and and replace it they had That's to do doors because they had to make sure that they were like weather sealed like you never really had to worry about making sure that the doors were weather sealed before you know unless yeah. you have central ac but most people don't really have central ac in california anyway unless you're like you know living in palos verdes or like the the richer neighborhoods malibu the high life <laughs> Well, like the the valley, the valley girls. Oh my god! Right. <laughs> I was born in I was born in the valley. Were you? <laughs> uh, you were Barbie yeah. girl. Bro, I was born in Granada Hills. Barbie Javi. Where's your blonde hair, yeah. bro? I bet my, you, mine is the blonde hair. Used to have some. I got some grays. You got some grays. Used some to have some <laughs> Hell no, I bro. <laughs> I used to have frosted tips, bro. I was such a poser, man. I used to frost my tips and I would wear like a visor with my hair, like my spiky hair, kind of like going through the visor, man. I, I just okay I and sink. 
<laughs> I know, right? That's exactly what I was going for, man. Hey, the, the girls were I was like, hmm. hey. Hey, you got to experiment works. with it, right? You got to figure out what works for you. <laughs> now it's like yes, sir. full beard, tattoos all over the place, bald head. Like, I, I finally bod, figured out and did some soul searching. <laughs> that, that, uh, that's, that's funny, like, bro. That's like in life, man. Soul searching. That's so funny. All right. So. Let's go ahead and get this show started. And the first thing we got to talk about is a couple starting pitcher injury returns. So the first one that we got to talk about is, of course, the favorite, Nick Lodolo. And he impressed, man. I remember last year, a lot of people were talking about uh, Nick Lodolo, you know, going to have like a breakout season. And and he was supposed to be like everyone's on everyone's radar, right? But then he got hurt and... uh, and the Reds just weren't really like that good yet, you know. Plus, you know, it's it's there was the state of starting pitching last year as well, where just you know hitters were just teeing off on a lot of pitchers. League wide ERA was up a little bit, and but Nicoladolo, man, uh, he just whoa, he, he was at the White Sox, five point two innings pitched, only allowed one hit, zero earned runs, one walk, ten strikeouts. That's the kind That's of crazy. up. We can we can expect from uh, Nick Lodolo. Now, granted, it was versus one of the worst teams in Major League Baseball right now against the White Sox, but still, man, ten strikeouts to have ten yeah. strikeouts in less than six innings. He unfortunately couldn't even get out of the sixth inning, so no quality start for those who were playing in leagues with quality starts. Uh, he only needed one more out, but you know what? It was his first start, you know, this season, and. Um, He's definitely on a pitch limit, you know, for now until he can kind of just like build up a little bit more. But he definitely impressed me, man. Now, Uh, um, what was the injury? If I'm not sure what the injury was. I think it was oblique. I think it was an oblique um, mid-season. It it wasn't even like I I think he he pitched like April and May, and then he was just out for the rest of the season. So 10 Ks with an oblique injury. That's that's pretty good. Let's see. That's pretty uh, good. We have this. Oh, nope. I am wrong. I actually wrote it down in my notes. I don't know why. I just didn't read what I wrote right in front of me. Uh, so it was a stress fracture in his left tibia. Oh. And then he, ended a, uh, he uh, suffered a setback, which ended his 2023 campaign. So mm, Okay. So, so technically, it didn't really mess with his mechanics. It was just, I mean, it kind of does, I guess. Because you push off. I wonder if it's the leg that you push off of that he would push off. Of. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, left no. tibia, and he's a lefty pitcher, so mm. yeah, he's he's uh, pushing off with yeah. his left. Yeah. So he, yeah, okay, so yeah, that that yeah, I could see what, how that would mess with his mechanics a little bit. But um, yeah, man, but it, it just looks like he didn't lose a step. I mean. He's he's looking good, man. He he's already well. This is what I checked yesterday on on uh, Yahoo. He's sixty nine percent rostered in Yahoo. Uh, That's crazy. Might be a little bit higher today, you know, because yeah. all the the ad drops from you know last night and possibly all day yesterday. But um, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm liking Nick Lodolo. I actually have him in two of my leagues, and uh, I I think he's going against the Cubs this weekend. Is that right? Uh, the Reds I think they have a mm. matchup against the Cubs, and, and I'm I'm willing to give him a try. On, honestly, like I don't care what lineup he's facing, I'm still gonna put him out there anyway, just because of how much he impressed me uh, this you know this past week. And um, I mean, that's all I really want to say about Nick Lodolo. And the the next guy that we got to talk about, uh, he had an okay start, but it wasn't the best. You know, and that's Mike Lorenzen. And, you know, everyone everyone thought, you know, when Mike Lorenzen got traded to the Phillies last season and in his first home start, he throws a no-hitter. You know, so everyone's thinking like, oh, the Phillies, you know, it it, it changed him and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Domingo German also had a no-hitter and he was trash. And uh, mm-hmm. honestly, I kind of think that, Michael Lorenzen isn't really like trash. Like Domingo Herman is like the type of pitcher that I don't even really want to pick him up against like weak lineups, you yeah. know, 
Michael Lorenzen, I would probably want to pick him up against weaker lineups, especially because he's on the Texas Rangers now and he has all that um, that run support that behind him. Yeah. So Michael Lorenzen, so I don't know if you know this. I'm, I'm pretty sure you do, but this is the original two-way player. So he came up um, as a starting pitcher and an outfielder, you know, when he first got mm -hmm. drafted by the Reds. And he actually made 29 appearances in the outfield in 2019. But, you know, he, his I think his batting average was okay. He just didn't really have, like, it. You know, he didn't have that, like, Major League Baseball requirement for, for a hitter. But apparently he's good enough to pitch in the Major Leagues, which is good enough for us. You know, that way we don't have to deal with switching them back and forth between hitter. Not, not like that would be a big deal because everyone does it with Otani anyway. But, yeah. Um, all right, so Mike Lorenzen has spent the majority of his career coming out of the bullpen. And uh, Texas, I, I really think that the Rangers are probably going to move him back into the bullpen eventually because, dude, you have Max Scherzer and Jacob deGrom both coming back from injury. Scherzer's probably going to be a little bit before deGrom. I think deGrom's coming back in, like, July. Uh, Scherzer should be back soon. I want to say he's already making, like, uh, rehab starts or he's about to make a rehab start. And um, they also have Nate, Nate, Nate Eovaldi, John Gray, Andrew Heaney. And I know he's hurt right now. You got the rookie Cody Bradford. And then now Michael Lorenzen added to the mix. So that's one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six. That's seven starting pitchers, including Michael Lorenzen. So out of all of those guys, you know, maybe they might want to like limit Cody Bradford's innings pitched because he's so young. Um, but honestly, I think Michael Lorenzen might actually thrive a little bit better in the bullpen. You know, I, yeah, I, I know he's stretched I out or, or like um, mid relief, you know, pitch two, three innings at a time, you know, especially yeah, with one business. of those bulk, one of those bulk relief pitchers. Yeah. Especially that. with like uh Scherzer and DeGrom coming back from injury, they're not going to be able to, to, you know, take on a full <clears throat> in the beginning, you know, so it'd, it'd be yeah. nice to have like both of those guys start, maybe go, four innings, five innings, you know, in the beginning. And then Mike Lorenzen just follows them and pitches yeah. at least two innings, get him into the seventh. And then you have your setup guy and your, uh, and your closer come out and shut, shut him down, you know, and Kirby Yates yeah. from the Rangers. Hey, he's doing a pretty good job right now. Also. So it, yeah. it looks like he is getting some save opportunities and uh, a lot of hold opportunities. So um, yeah, if you're, a relief pitcher. If you're in a save and holds league, look for Kirby Yates. He is he's he's not owned in most leagues, so that that's a a decent pickup that you can do right now. Yeah, um, we always talk about like the state of pitching nowadays. You know, guys are not going seven, eight innings. You know, they're going six max, unless you're like you know the workhorse where you can probably go seven, depending on you know how how much of a, a lead you have in the game um but yeah i've always i've always seen lorenzen as a relief pitcher um you, you know the whole no hitter thing last year was was more of a fluke to me i was like okay cool you know i mean it's a great accomplishment but can can you maintain that level of consistency? And I I just don't see it with with Lorenzen. Um, so yeah, I, you know the they, we were just talking about um the Rangers right now. They got a uh, Jack Leiter pitching too. Um, so that's another arm you know that they have in the bag. So they're you know once you know everybody gets healthy and stuff, they're gonna you know they're gonna have to figure some things out. But um. I it Lorenzo in the in the bullpen to me would would benefit them to me the most instead of having them starting because I just feel like he's good for you for like a good two innings three innings maybe you know one of, like I said like a bulk relief guy the the thing with Lorenzo like you said he's been so inconsistent like his whole career but it, it's not just about his inconsistency it, it he's been wildly inconsistent you know and when you're walking that many batters, you know, so uh, let's see, last season, uh, pitching with the Phillies, he made, mm, let's see, with Philly, he made seven starts, and he had 
uh, 20 walks out of those seven starts. That's a lot of walks, you know, in, in only seven yeah. starts. And before that, he was in Detroit. Let's see. He had uh, – he pitched 18 games and – uh, 27 walks. So only 27 walks in 18 games. That's actually pretty good. So he was doing a lot better in Detroit uh, versus Philadelphia. But in Detroit, he was also facing some weaker lineups because the AL Central was the weakest division last season. And most of the time, you're you know you're facing your uh, division rivals. And then he moves over to Philly, and then you're facing teams like the Braves and the Mets and uh, the hot hitting Marlins at the time. You know, with uh, Luis Arias in the lineup every day and um, yeah, it, it probably wasn't the, it, it probably wasn't him himself. It was, I, I think it was just like, uh, the division, like the challenge that he was faced with, you know, moving from the AL central into the, that's big, it's huge. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, so let's see. He is 32 years old, so it, it's kind of hard to imagine him taking a step forward now. You know, unless the Rangers can actually fix him. But I mean, 32 years old, what really can they do, you know, to yeah. kind of like salvage that? But I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's just kind of like towards the end of his career, possibly. Um, you know, he'll he'll probably stick around for a few more years, but I don't think that he'll be anyone that's like on on anyone's radar. Like you might he, he might be the type of pitcher that you know you pick up versus the Oakland A's or or the Las yeah. Vegas or you know, whatever other A's are out there. The Sacramento A's, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> those, yeah, those those A's. But uh, let's see. In his start at Detroit on April fifteenth, he did allow a lot of hard contact. Only three hits allowed. Uh, he walked five while only striking out four. And to walk five against a team like Detroit, uh, that's scary, man. That so we yeah. were just talking. Or the show started that I had Mike Lorenzen on my team and then I dropped him. I had him just for this one start because I saw that he was at Detroit. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and give it a try. But after I see him walking five and only striking out four, I dropped his ass right away. I don't even remember who I picked up instead. Um, like but, a ton of bricks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think Lorenzen has upside, obviously, because he had that no hitter last season, but I'm really only interested in him as a streamer versus weaker lineups going forward this season. What about yep. you? Yep, I uh, totally agree. 100%. All right, that was starting pitcher injury returns. Now we move on to the meat of the episode. The nitty gritty. So I know everyone is so excited about Jackson Holiday. Oh, Jackson Holiday, best prospect in baseball coming up. I was not really big, very high on Jackson Holiday. You know, I looked at his minor league stats and they were good, but they weren't like wowing me, you know, like I, I think he he had like what 10 home runs in, in one season in the minors and um I, I think the, the last season, actually, he had 10 home runs in the minors. But honestly, I'm looking at Colton Kowser, dude. I really like Colton Kowser. I, I think at least for 2024, not for the future, you know, because I think Jackson Holiday is a future superstar. But I think for now, I'd much rather have Colton Kowser than Jackson Holiday in my lineup for 2024. Well, yeah, uh, you can make the case, though, because. I mean, think about it. Uh, Colton Kowser, he he's another dude. He's another minor league, you know, prospect coming up. And, you know, they have Westberg out there too. Um, you know, Jackson Holiday now. You know, like all these guys that, 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 that they brought up from the minors, man. Like, man, it, all, all, all the guys that are currently on the team right now can potentially be great you know, in their, in their respected, uh, positions. Um, holiday is the one, you know, that everybody is talking about. Um, you know, he, he only has one hit, man. And <laughs> I, to me, it just seems like, uh, you know, obviously the hype is, you know, was huge. You know, he, um, you know, he's trying to show out just like any young 20 year old, you know, trying to make a name for himself, you know, like trying to show that he's a real deal you know, he maybe has to like, 
bring it down a notch a little bit, you know, try to get some contact on the ball instead of trying to hit the hell out of the ball. I, I saw the first game that he that he played in, and, man, it, it just looked like he was trying to swing for the fences each at bat. And I'm like, dude, like, chill. You know, you, you just want that contact, bro. That that You know, I always see that as a hitter. You want to get contact on the ball, you know, so you can get comfortable, right? Um, so I'm not surprised that he's struggling right now, really. Um, you know, sometimes it takes, you know, these players uh, a good amount of time to get, you know, situated and, you know, it's a you know, new team, you know, everything's different, you know. Um, yeah, I, yeah, like, and then Kowser, dude, he's just, bro, he's just on another level right now, man. He's raking, dude. Dude, he is killing it, man. Like, I think, man, he was on the waiver in, I want to say, your league. Mm. And somebody just scooped him up. Not, not right now. It's, he's already been picked up. But he was on the waiver, I think, like last week. And I was like, man, he's still out there. Like I was no. trying to figure out who to drop. That's and the somebody thing. Him up. That's the thing, dude. Yeah. I, I'm thinking for next year. I'm thinking we're gonna add um, maybe one more outfield spot. We have three outfield uh, spots right now in our league, but I think we need to add one more because there's a lot of outfielders. Like a uh, a lot of people were talking about that that there's not that many outfielders out there, but there's so many that just keep on coming up every year, you know, and Colton is one of them. And it's like, like for me, I have uh, Marcelo Suna who's raking right now. Also uh, Mookie Betts. And um, I don't remember who my other outfielder is, but uh, in, in that league, cause I have, you know, six leagues that I'm in, but um, mm. in that league, I have, I have three studs, you know, so I'm thinking like, okay, well, I can't really drop an outfielder. So I'm looking at my like utility guys, but then my utility guys have like, you know, four different eligible spots that they're, that they can play at. So I don't want to drop them because they're, you know, if, if someone has a day off, like I'm going to need to, you know, move them into, um, you know, a shortstop or second base or whatever it is. I think And Andres Jimenez is one of my uh, utility in, in that league. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to drop Andres Jimenez for Colton Kowser because, you know, uh, Colton Kowser, he's doing great right now, but you never know how it's going to be down the stretch, especially with rookies. But Andres Jimenez is more, like, proven. You know, he's been in the yeah. league years now, and and everyone knows that, like, you know, he's pretty damn good. Um, but yeah. going back to Jackson Holiday in 2023, among four teams in the minor leagues, he played 125 games, only 12 home runs, dude. His his sprint speed is ninety one ninety uh, first percentile, so he's really fast. He's fast. He, he, legged yeah. out, he, legged, he legged out nine triples, thirty doubles, and twenty four stolen bases, and that's great, you know. But it's a power game right now. If you're not hitting home yeah. runs, your value is not as high as it could be. And you know he's only twenty years old, so things could change. But if if I'm only seeing 12 home runs in 125 games, and this is in the minors, that's that's A ball, uh, high A, double A, and triple A, like between all four uh, division or all four levels, and only 12 home runs. I don't know that that doesn't really like show me too much. It did come with a 323 batting average and a 442 on base percentage, so that's pretty damn yeah. good there. And in points leagues, he's pretty valuable. And I guess in categories leagues, he's pretty valuable also because of those 24 stolen bases that he had. But I remember he's striking out a lot too, bro. He's striking out a lot too. He did have 118 strikeouts in 125 yeah. games in the minors. So, yeah. And it's, you know, it sucks because you want to see everything that, you know, all the positive stuff from him. You want to see it play out, but you can't get him on base because he, He's not getting on base, so you can't see him stealing bases, you know, which I think if he get on base and steal a base, it, you know, it's just kind of a like a like a psychological thing where, you know, I got a hit, I got a stolen base, and that you just work, you know, you work it out and, you know, you just start getting a little bit more, um, more used to, you know, the game, you know, as you're going. Um you just get comfortable, you know, when you, when you do the little things, it, it doesn't always have to be a hit, you know, if you can get on base and if you can steal a base, you know, maybe that'll get his, his, you know, his rhythm going, you know, and he he might get hot, you know? So it, it just kind of sucks that, 
he can't get on base or he hasn't gone on base only one time. Or, or, <laughs> or at least work the count, right? Like try to like, you know, yeah, battle the pitch exactly. and, and make the pitch throw 10 pitches, even if you get out, you know, at least you you did your job because you made the pitcher throw a lot more pitches. Yeah, you made than, him work. You know, yeah, you made him work. So you mm -hmm. get him out of the game early, you get the 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 relief pitchers in and you know, hopefully uh, the team can can do what you're not doing, but at least you're producing in a way, you know, it, it, at least in some way. Yeah. Uh, so in 2023, Colton Kowser made his major league debut on July 5th, and he was demoted five weeks later on August 11th. In that time, Kowser was very disappointing. Uh, 115 batting average with a 434 OPS. That kind of sounds like a little bit better than Jackson Holiday, what he's doing right now. Uh, that was in 26 games, no home runs, one stolen base, 13 walks to 22 strikeouts in 61 at bats. But in 2024, we are seeing a completely different player. We are seeing rookie of the year potential in my eyes. So yeah. in 2024, he's batting 405 with a, a thousand two sixty eight OPS in 16 games, four home That's runs. Great two stolen bases, three walks to 14 strikeouts in 42 at bats. Now the strikeouts are a little high. You know, I yeah. think he's around like 20 uh I saw it earlier. It's 28% uh strikeout rate, which is pretty yeah. high. It's kind of he's another, he's another young guy though. Yeah, I, you you know, you're going to get that. Yeah, he's he's a little bit older than Jackson Holiday. Colton Kowser's 24 years old, you know, which is why he got the call last year, you know, but um I don't know. Maybe he's finally hitting his stride, man. He's he's hitting the ball much harder this year. It's 90, uh, 93.1 miles per hour compared to 87.4 uh, last year in 2023. And his max uh, exit velocity this season, 113.6. So he's he's hitting the, the ball really, okay. really hard. Man. And that that's, yeah. that's great to see, you know, from a, a left-handed batter in Camden. Um, all of his expected stats look great. The K percentage is concerning, but with a 435 on base, that gives fantasy owners some relief. You know, that, that means that he's, he's got a pretty good batting average and he's walking, uh, uh you know, a, a decent amount as well. Uh, he's batting yeah. 450 on the fastball, 429 on breaking balls and, uh, 250 versus left-handed pitching and 444 versus right-handed pitching. And, you know, 250 versus left-handed pitching, that's that's not the best. But, you know, the league is only 25% left-handed pitchers. So more often than not, he's righties. And the 444 batting average versus right-handed pitchers, I'll take that all day, man. Dude, that's – when I saw his batting average, I was like, wait. <laughs> Typo? Like, no. Nah. real? Yeah, bro. I'm like, no way. Like, yeah, yeah, he's hitting that good. And, and he plays on a great team, man. Oh, man. And that's, his, that's a scary Baltimore lineup, dude. A lot of times, like when I'm looking at their actual stats and it's like inflated, you know, just like you said, like you were surprised to see that. I'm also looking at their expected stats, you know, expected stats kind of like show like how hard they're hitting the ball and, and, um, you know, where they're, wh what side of the field they're hitting it to, if they're hitting it in the air. But all of his expected stats, they look very similar to the numbers he was putting up in the minors the last three seasons. And uh, he also had 17 home runs and nine stolen bases in 87 games in AAA last season. So that gives me a lot of hope for his future, man. I'm thinking I, – I'm pretty sure I'm the one that picked up Colton Kowser in our league. And um, I, I think he might be my keeper, one of my keepers for next season. You know, yeah, definitely – on the cheap. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, what was it? Was it like $5 when, when uh, it's for undrafted players? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's dope, honestly, man. I think Colton Kowser is the real deal, and the Orioles did not miss with uh, their 2021 first round pick. Uh, I actually didn't mention that he's another first round pick of the Orioles, number five overall in uh, the 2021 draft. The, the, the Orioles, dude, they've been drafting so well. They have so many first round picks that have just. They, they've worked out a lot of times you'll see guys like Mickey Moniak that plays on the angels. Now that got drafted by the Phillies in the first round. I think he was the mm -hmm. first overall pick a few seasons ago. And he just, yeah. you know, they traded him, they traded him because he's just not worth it. You know, you, you see that a lot. 
And uh, the Orioles, they've just been, I don't know what's going on in their front office, but they're making a lot of good decisions when it comes to drafting. Yeah, their their farm system is is top five, definitely, man. I, I, I just like all the players that are coming out of there. And that's not including, um, well, there's another guy out there, uh, Mayo, I think. Mm-hmm. Kobe Mayo? Yeah. Yeah, there's, that's that's another one that everybody's talking about. I'm like, dude, like, I remember the Dodgers were like that, man, when they had, like, one of the top farm systems. Now it's kind of like, it's still top, I think, what, top 10, more or less? Mm, probably. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I remember it was, like, top three, man, like, when they, when they had all these uh, prospects in there. And, you know, it's just, you know, changing of the guards, you know. Yeah, you know, you got all these other teams that are drafting really good. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, you know, back with, you know, Jackson Holiday, hopefully he pans out and he is the guy that everybody, you know, thinks he's going to be. So, I mean, his dad, you know, seven time all star. Hey, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah, he's got he's got the the genes there. So um, hopefully it'll work out for him. But for now, yeah, Colton Cowser, he he's the real deal, man. But when you look at matt holiday you can just tell he's just like a big dude you look at jackson holiday and he just looks like the the high school kid that just played baseball you know he's he's not that big Um, (laughs) yeah it's a good thing he steals bases man because i really don't think there's that much upside when it comes to power like the the triples and the doubles look really good nine triples and and 30 doubles in 100 and what did i say 100 40 games, something like that. So that that's pretty good. You know, most major leaguers don't leg out nine triples in a season, but that just yeah. it shows his potential in the speed department. I just I keep on hearing that he's like a five tool player, a five tool player, but where's the power? You know, he's hitting gaps, you know, which is why he's able to leg out nine triples, you know. But when it comes to categories leagues, like home runs are much more valuable than stolen bases are. Stolen bases yep. are still valuable, like you're still searching for them. But when someone hits a home run, they get a, a run. They get, they get at least one RBI. You know, if there's runners on, they get multiple RBIs and they get the home run for the week. You know, versus a stolen base, it's just a stolen base that you know it's only yep. one catch that it kind of beefs up. So, yeah. In in the short, I like Colton Cowser better than Jackson Holiday for 2024. You know, yeah. I I might get some hate because uh, a few weeks ago, I was actually talking about the three Jacksons, the three Jackson rookies that were coming up. And this is before Jackson Holiday got his call up. And I said that Jackson Merrill is my favorite out of all these three for 2024. You know, and so far I've been right, man. Jackson Merrill has continued to impress ever since his uh, ever since opening day because yeah. he made the opening day roster. He's the only one actually. No, I think Jackson Churio made the opening day roster as well. But um, Jackson Churio is doing good. You know, he's he's fine. Yeah. I think his batting average is like two seventies. Yep. Um, but then you look at Jackson Merrill, and he's just he looks like rookie of the year for the National mm-hmm. League. You know, you could have Colton Cowser as rookie he's of the year. three hundred, right? Yeah, he's he's three thirty three right now. So we could have Colton Cowser as American League Rookie of the Year, and then possibly um, Jackson Merrill as National League Rookie of the Year. You know, it's yeah. it's early, it, it's it's really early. You know, you don't know what's going to happen throughout the season, but I'm I'm really liking both of these guys, man. Yeah. So yeah, Jackson Merrill. Um, I like Jackson Merrill. He, he it looks like he's just like an all around good player. You know, does all the like the little things and stuff like that. So, and he plays on a good team. You know, the Padres. You know, be it as it may, I I hate the Padres, but they're you know they got a good offensive team, and um, you know, with all those veterans there, you know, we always talk about that. You know, if you got a veteran presence in a ball club, you you got you know these young guys that are coming up, and dude, they got so much knowledge that uh, you know the sky's the limit with these guys. You know, you know, so, sometimes, sometimes it just takes like uh, like a a certain way to be for something to be explained to you for it to just click you know and with these veterans sometimes they just have a way to to make it click you know with these young guys so um so personal story 
I like going disc golfing. I don't know if you like if you know what disc golfing is, but it's yeah, no. it's it's, it's kind of like a small smaller frisbee, and um, you know you're you're throwing it down a field, and you're trying to get it as close to this like a uh, big bird cage as possible, you know, and yeah. and the least you know it's like golf, like you try to throw it the least amount of times to try to make it in that cage, and I was. I'm a big dude, you know, I'm 260 pounds and I'm, I'm throwing this disc as hard as I can. But then my buddy, Steve, that's like 150 pounds. He just keeps on throwing it farther than me. And I'm just like, dude, what am I doing wrong? And he was trying to explain to me, you know, what I'm doing wrong mechanics and all that. But, Mm -hmm. um, one thing that he said is pretend like you have a towel and you're whipping someone with it. You know, that's the action. Mm -hmm. And then it just clicked, dude. You know, because he's been playing disc golf since he was like a little kid. And that's one of the things that, you know, it, it, he just kind of like figured out on his own, you know, and he told me this. And then all of a sudden, bro, I'm, I'm throwing these discs like crazy far, man. Like I'm, I'm getting pars on almost every hole now, you know, versus bef- before when I would be getting doubles and triple bogeys. So, yeah, you think about, you think about a Frisbee, right? Yeah. How we, you know, you just throw a frisbee like a frisbee. Oh, you yes. don't think about that's crazy. I would have never thought that you would, huh? I'm gonna have to remember that. <laughs> yeah, you should go I'm out. Start, I'm gonna start. I, I'm gonna start throwing a regular frisbee like that. Let's see how far I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the disc uh, for disc golf are a little bit heavier, so they glide a little bit better than the frisbees do. But oh, uh, nice. Yeah, we should go out one time. Yeah, be, yeah, yeah. I'll be down to do that. Give it a whirl. All right, so let's move on to our next segment. We are going into waiver wire must adds. And since we just started talking about Jackson Merrill, might as well start with my um, waiver wire ad for my one of my hitters, Jackson Merrill. Currently 68% rostered in Yahoo. He has shortstop and outfield eligibility. Another first round draft pick from the San Diego Padres. He was number 27 overall. I was actually getting a lot of hate from this one dude on on uh, YouTube. He was he was commenting about um, I can't believe that you would have Jackson Merrill ahead of Jackson Holiday in the rankings and and all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, they were both drafted in the first round. So they had they yeah. both have very high potential, you know. Sometimes first round draft draft picks hit and sometimes they don't and yeah. for this season in 20 2024 Jackson Merrill's been hitting and Jackson Holiday hasn't so far granted it's small sample size but I really like Jackson Merrill man so he's he's batting 335 or sorry 333 with a 405 on base percentage 844 OPS has one home run 12 runs 8 RBI four stolen bases eight walks to 12 strikeouts. And what really gets me, dude, is, you know, I'm, I'm big on expected stats, expected batting average 309, you know? So even like the underlying numbers are saying that he's a really good hitter. Expected slug 478 has a 10.8% walk rate and a 16.1% K percentage. So under 20% strikeouts, that's awesome. Over 6% walk rate, that's awesome. Yeah. Exit velocity is 89.3 miles an hour at 20 years old. It's only going to go up from there, you know, and it's really hard to hit home runs in San Diego, which is why he only has one home run so far. Yeah. Uh, max exit velocity so far is 108 miles an hour and 108 miles an hour. That that's hitting the ball fr- pretty freaking hard, man. Uh, launch angle is a little bit low at 9.5. I'd like to see that in the teens, you know, 13, 14. That could be another thing that could help him with his uh, in, in the power department to get some more home runs. Uh, ground ball percentage seems to be the Achilles heel for him. I think league average is about 38%. He's at 46.3% right now. <laughs> Salud, wait. Sorry. <laughs> um, that came out of so- nowhere. 46.3% ground ball rate. It's it's not optimal, but look at his fly ball rate at 24.1% and line drive rate at 27.8%. Both of those are above average. So that's the reason why he's getting on base as often as he is, over 400, you know, because a lot of line drives and a lot of fly balls. And, you know, in a big bigger park like uh like Petco, you know, you you hit that gap and 
He's he's seventy seventh percentile on sprint speed, so we're gonna see a lot of doubles and a lot of triples from Jackson Merrill, I think, this year. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, what haven't we said about Merrill? He's a good player, and I think he's gonna be better. I, I honestly think that he he might be the guy for uh, rookie of the year, and I know if he keeps yep. if he keeps it up the way he's going, yeah, highly possible. Yep. All right, so that was my first hitter. Uh, waiver wire ad. Let's let's go to to your first hitter, Javi. Who you got? All right. So um, I got a journeyman, dude. Uh, Jesse Winker from the Nationals. Uh, he's been with the Reds, the Mariners, the Brewers, and now the Nationals. Um, he was an All Star when he was with the Reds in 2021. Um, the the issue. Okay, so. Here's the outlier, right? For my two guys that I have, they're both 30 or 30 or older. And they both have a long history of injuries, which sucks, right? Because, you know, that's what you're trying to replace. You know, you got all these other injuries that are going on right now. And you're trying to pick up other guys in the waiver that can, you know, can cover while these guys get, you know, healthy. You know, with these two guys that, you know, that I have, you know, the first one being Winker, um, you know, he's just had a long history of injuries, you know, stemming from 2018. It's been a shoulder, back, ribs, neck, oblique, everything. Dude, it's like if you have a diagram of the body, every single point on his body is like red, dude. So, um, you know, that that's the down, the downfall. Um you know, for a player like this, but I, I'm always the kind of dude that I, I like to ride the hot, hot hand and he's just been hitting every freaking game that I've seen him play in. He's hitting the ball, even if it's just a hit, right? Um, he, you know, he's missed sometime this year, but it was just due to illness. Um, but right now he's batting 364, two home runs, only five RBIs, but you know, Plays with the Nationals, you know. Um, he has six doubles, 485 OBP, 1067 OPS. That's um, awesome. He, dude, yeah, he's just he's just finding he's just he's just locating the ball, dude. He's just he's just like he's just on it right now, right? So, um, I mean, I like I said, I'm I'm the type of fantasy you know player that. Like you know, if I see a guy that's hitting, you know, ten out of fifteen games, like that is is a must add for me, right? Um, so like for me, you know, ride the hot hand. You know, like I said, he's thirty years old. You know, if he could stay healthy, man, you know, the Nationals aren't gonna make a lot of noise, but you know that that it's kind of a positive. Dude, they took two out of the three from the Dodgers, bro. Like the hell man you yes. know so, so uh, and he's only 17 percent rostered so he is yeah. really available yep. like why dude and i i really like jesse winker that but just like you said the the problem for him has been the injuries you know yep. but he hits the ball hard um expected batting average has basically always been good except for the years that he's been injured which has been a lot you know um a lot uh, the strikeout rate is good. The walk rate is good. So he's highly valuable in points leagues and in categories leagues. And just like you said, man, he might just be the hot hand that you just want to write out for now. And then, yeah. you know, maybe he'll we'll have like a leg thing or an ankle thing or a wrist thing or a shoulder thing, you know, but that, hey, when it comes to that, that's when you have to deal with it. But for right now, yeah. he's trying to win your weeks and make sure you get in the playoffs. Maybe he, Maybe he will be there for your playoffs, or maybe he won't. But at least you'll, you know, you'll you'll have a lot of points now that kind of like puts you up in those rankings. So I really like Jesse. Williams. Yeah, yeah. Like 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 I said, a lot of a lot of injuries are going on right now, man. Tyler O'Neill just hit the IL, uh, seven day IL. So you know, as a spare, you know, if Winker's there, pick him up. Great replacement. You know? Yep. Yeah, that was my my first guy. Um, you want me to jump onto the second one or yeah, go for it, dude. All right. So, so this is another one. Um, 
who is another journeyman, uh, 33 years old, Mitch Hanniger, started with the the Diamondbacks, played for the Mariners, went to the Giants last year, and came back to the Mariners this year. Um, he was another All Star in 2018 with the Mariners. Um, is another dude that's just been hit. Hard by the injury bug, a uh, wrist, a knee, a testicle, <laughs> yeah, back, oblique, dude. yeah, man. And um, I mean, it, you know, that's the thing, you know, uh, older players, you know, we talk about how, you know, when they get injured, you know, it takes them longer to recover and stuff like that. So, um, you know, right now, um, he, he's batting 292, three home runs, 13 RBIs. 370 OBP and an 847 OPS. He's 16 for 55 in his last 15 games with two home runs and 10 RBIs. Uh, another hot hand right now. Another another guy that's you know putting in work. Uh, a veteran for you know a good a, a decent Seattle Mariner team, um, but a veteran nonetheless, which is what Seattle needs. You know. Um, little older on the older side but like i said there's a lot of injuries going on right now and um if you can find somebody like hanniger or winker right now that are they're just raking you know they're raking they know the game um just ride the hot hand man and and once your players you know if if he stays hot keep him you know you might find you know like a diamond in the rough you know uh but yeah um hanniger is another good um he's an outfielder as well so uh winker he plays outfield and i think he dhs so uh you know there's a lot of injuries in the outfield right now so the, these two guys i think um you know for the time being uh they, they'll they're good uh they're good plug and play players so mitch hanniger's currently at 27 percent roster so let me ask you which one would you rather have jesse winker or mitch hanniger since they're you know both outfielders uh i'd probably go with winker just because yeah. he's younger, and I mean, I mean, Hanniger probably plays on a better team, but I don't know, dude. I just see Winker, and, and he he's just finding the ball a lot better than Hanniger. Um, I, let's see how long it goes, right? Let's how, let's see how long he can keep it going. But you know, it, it, he was getting on base against the Dodgers. You know, he's getting on base against good players. He, he you know, uh, against good teams. Excuse me. Um, so it's not like he's only good against bad teams, you know, he's playing good against good teams. So, you know, that, that's another, that's another positive. So yeah, I, I, do. I would probably go with Winker. I, I agree. I like Winker, um, a lot more than I like Hanniger. Actually, I do like Hanniger also, you know, so if Jesse Winker's not available, Hanniger is like a, a decent option. Yeah. I actually think that their roster percentage should be switched though, because 24% for Hanniger and 17% for Winker. I think, I think both of them should be close to like 25% rostered, maybe a little bit more, you know, because of, of deeper leagues, like neither one of them are going to be owned in 10 team leagues. Um, there's, got to be better outfielders available out there it might be it might be because of the teams they play on yeah maybe. yeah yeah, yeah. context you know not as many runs mm -hmm. in rbis as like other players but uh for jesse winker you know the low strikeout rate basically his whole career uh for his career he has a 17.9 percent strikeout rate league average is 22.2 and he has a 12.9 uh walk rate league average is 8.4 and this season walk rates a little better than usual and the strikeout rates uh actually both of them are a little bit better than his career numbers so um he's always been the kind of guy to take a lot of pitches and doesn't really strike out a lot and takes a lot of walks so in a points league highly valuable um and you know he's hitting the ball decently hard 89 miles an hour on average 106.6 max this season uh the x x Expected batting average is 309 for Jesse Winker. And then you look on the Mitch Hanniger side and 24.7% uh, strikeout rate, which is about his um, his career number, 11% walk rate, which is pretty pretty good. 8.8 um, .8 is his career. 8.4 is league average. So walks have never really been the problem for him. It's just the strikeout rate. He's, he's getting closer to 30 uh, basically every single season. Like last year, it was a 28.4. The year before, it was 26.3, uh, 28.6, and 2019. 
Um, so the strikeout rate, it's a little bit higher. It's still not bad. It's not over 30%, you know, but once you get into like the, the high twenties or high, uh, or, or low thirties, that's when I want to see, you know, 40 home runs from, from these guys, you know, if you're not hitting 40 home runs and you're striking out that much, I don't really see your value, you know, Uh, in, in 2021, Mitch Hanniger did have 39 home runs with uh, a 253 batting average. That also came with 169 strikeouts, you know, a high strikeout percentage that year. But still, it came with 39 home runs, so everything was gravy. Yeah. Had 110 yeah, runs scored. Bombs all day. Yeah, 110 runs scored that season and 100, 100 RBI that season. And uh, only one stolen base. So he's, he's basically a non-stolen uh, base guy, you know, but... No. Jesse Winker, I think there's a little bit more upside for him. Um, maybe not in the power department, but just getting on base in general. So maybe in a categories league, I'd rather have Mitch Hanniger, but in a points league, I'd uh, rather have uh, Jesse Winker. Yeah. Two. All right. So that was your second uh, batter that you chose for waiver wire. And I'm going to go f- uh, to my second batter and i actually have so if you can see this let me hide this banner real quick all right so estuary ruiz uh i i I hope i didn't butcher that name you you probably butchered it (laughs) it's e-s-t-e-u-r-y so however you however you say that estuary i don't know whatever (laughs) ruiz from the athletics all right. Roll your like, R's, bro. Roll your R's. <laughs> like a tie gun. Yeah, All right. right. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this on the small screen that you may be looking on, but um, Estuary Ruiz is wearing a bracelet that says Last Dive Bar, and that's actually a um, – it's an Oakland thing. You know, the, a lot of the fans are, are wearing this in um, protest of them leaving oakland and moving to las vegas and you see some of the players wearing these bracelets and one of the players that was wearing these in addition to ruiz was brent rooker and brent rooker was also sent down to the minors and he was uh not sent down to the minors he was benched uh a few games for specifically wearing this uh bracelet and you know we saw uh ruiz get off to a really hot start uh this season I'm going to take off this picture real quick. Um, so before they made him go down to AAA, he was actually batting 429 with a 1232 OPS um, a, a few games into the season. You know, So he was literally their best player on their team, and he gets demoted down to AAA. You know, and because of like, the bracelet? Yeah, because it's like um, the, the ownership just didn't like that. Wow. They didn't like that that he was, you know, basically saying like, "I don't like that you guys are trying to move." Right. You know, it, was, it was a protest, and you know, protests come with consequences sometimes. And since the A's aren't going to the playoffs and not really like making any noise or anything, you know, I guess they don't really have a problem with with benching, you know, one of their best players on their team. So that's crazy, uh, you know. And then he he comes back and he's just basically doing the same thing like he's still hitting man and uh i i really like yeah. ruiz um especially in a categories league because of the upside of his stolen base potential he had 67 stolen bases last season with a 254 uh batting average so the batting average it, you know it, it leaves a little bit to be desired but uh-huh. you, know, you, you can't deny his stolen base potential like that that's crazy yeah. man so yeah it's crazy uh, that he only has one stolen base so far yeah, maybe they're not letting him run. Maybe they're they're yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he's just hitting too many doubles. No, he only has yeah. one double and one triple so far. <laughs> but he's he's That's only crazy. played six games in twenty twenty four. So yeah. that could also be the reason why he only has two stolen bases. Uh, we'll, we'll see. His on base percentage is at uh, three. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It has his batting average at 357 and on base percentage at 333. So I don't know how your on base percentage is less than your batting average. That doesn't really make any sense to me. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know yeah, about that one. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but 
only six games so far. You know, it, it is small sample size, but I thought it was really weird, you know, that they demoted him just just after like like three games you know he played uh, right when the season started and um you know it it's the A's fans that are uh the ones that are saying that he was punished for you know wearing the bracelet so uh uh st 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 ruiz uh, still butch <laughs> um check his roster percentage real quick is uh it looks like he's 63 percent rostered uh, so he he could be available in a lot of other leagues, um, categories leagues. I would definitely pick him up because of that stolen base potential. Uh, even though he's not stealing yet, I, I think it will come. Let's see in twenty twenty two. Esturi way, Esturi, Esturi Ruiz. Es este Esturi, Esturi, Esti, whatever. I'm done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2022, he was 98th percentile in sprint speed. In 2023, he was 97th percentile in sprint speed. So he fast. Yeah. He makes fast people look like not fast. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that was my, my second letter. Um, I think that, that, you know, all four of these guys are pretty good options. I like we, it. We gave you all picks, you know, versus, you know, points versus uh, categories leagues. So, uh, Use your ads accordingly. All right, man. Let, let's go into the starting pitching. We got to yeah. give starting pitcher a uh, waiver wire ad to, you know, for, for everyone listening. So who you got? Okay. Um, I'm going with uh, Ryan Weathers from the Marlins. Um, used to play for the Padres. Has a terrible – had a terrible record uh, before this little – his little streak that he's going on right now. He's six and twenty-three, man. That's that's crazy. Terrible. Um, yeah, but uh, this season though, he is two and one with a two seventy ERA in twenty innings pitched, twenty-two strikes with a one thirty-five whip. Uh, he took care of the Yankees, which is uh, a big, you know, when when you have a pitcher that you do not see. He, he, you know they're they're pitching against a great lineup, and you don't really know who the pitcher is, or maybe you do, but he's not like a star. Um, it, it's it's kind of to me it's kind of a big deal because yeah, it's like um uh, the guy from the the Astros, Blanco, right? He pitched against he he pitched that no hitter, and then he comes back and he pitches against the Rangers, and he almost does it again right so ryan weathers is not a household name you know that you would know um but he he, he is pitching really good man he he struck out 10 against the giants um the 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 marlins have a lot of injured pitchers right now they have a lot of injuries um they just demoted freaking max meyer which i do not understand why um he was probably their one bright spot in that rotation minus the guy that you're about to talk about um who is another uh, marlin um he he's going to pitch against the cubs next which is uh that's like um it's like a good way to measure if this is legit or if it's not um you know like i said he did beat the yankees but the cubs are another good team that have you know really good hitters um so i'm i'm very curious to see where how 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 well he can pitch against the cubs um but you know there are also a lot of injuries um you know with pitchers so um you know if he is available um i would i would scoop him up um because like i said uh he he pitched good against the yankees and uh, that's not an easy lineup to get through so um you know he could probably do the same thing with the cubs but uh we'll see yeah, it looks um, like so the, that, 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 that's where I'm kind of like up in the air right now with him. Like I want to, you know, you know, pick him up, but I kind of want to see what he does with the Cubs. And then if he does good with the Cubs and and you know, let's go for it, you know. So it looks like the only trouble he, he's had so far was in his first start this season, which was against the, the Pirates and the Pirates. You know, they started off this season on a tear, man. I, I believe they were eight. No, to start the season. 
Uh, so he went four innings, allowed seven hits, three earned runs, two walks, and five strikeouts. So more than a strikeout per innings. Uh, you, you know, you kind of see the the potential right there. Um, but since then, he's only allowed uh, three three more runs in three starts. So in his second start of the season, he went five innings against the Cardinals, allowed three hits, one earned run, uh, three walks. And six strikeouts. So again, the the walks, you know, the the walks bug kind of like bit him. He had two walks in his first start, three walks in his second start, three walks again in his third start against the Yankees, which was still a pretty good outing. No runs, three hits, three walks, and only one strikeout though. And the Yankees are a strikeout team, so that was kind of like weird to see. But then he uh-huh. goes out against the Giants, six innings, five hits, two earned runs. Uh, one walk to 10 strikeouts. So that's the kind of potential that we would like to see. And this was in um, Miami. You know, it, it's not yeah. like the, the um, Oracle Park was helping him, you know, in that factor. But um, right. I ended up him up, you know, I I want to give him a chance. Uh, he was a, a, a former first round pick in 2018. He went number seven overall to the Padres. So, you know, if they saw something in him six years ago, you know, maybe it's time for him to finally break out. Let's see. He yeah. is. Let's see. He is he currently four years old. So yeah. maybe it, maybe it's about that time where he's actually like taking the step forward. And I don't know if Miami's the actual team to help him take that step forward. You know, we're always talking about the Cardinals and the Rays and the Dodgers, how they're so good at developing their pitching, but Hey, maybe the, uh, maybe the Marlins are actually doing something right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, let's see, just like you said, the, the guy that I want to talk to is, uh, I want to talk about is on the same team. You know, he's, he's in the Marlins, uh, 42% rostered. That would be Edward Cabrera uh, made his MLB debut in August of 2021. He was a top prospect in the Marlins organization. Uh, biggest hole in his game was always his command. He second yeah. highest percentage in the league among qualifying pitchers last season. Um, th- the first being uh, Blake Snell, of course, you know, got, got to mention yep. that as I am a uh-huh. Blake Snell. And I'm very glad that Blake Snell is actually not doing good this season. Uh, so far, hell yeah! Because, <laughs> I had him on my shit list to start the year, and it looks like uh, we were right, man. Because uh, I, I believe out. <laughs> a Blake Snell hater as well. <laughs> All right, so in 2023, uh, Edward Cabrera finished his big league season with a 4.24 ERA, a 15.2 percent walk rate, terrible, 27.2 percent case percentage pretty good and an excellent batted ball profile now this is where uh edward cabrera like really succeeds his ground ball percentage was at 55.7 league average is at 42 percent so he's inducing a lot of ground balls uh fly ball percentage was at 22 percent league average is at 24 and line drives were at 15.4 percent and league average is 24 percent so um i really like the batted ball profile when it comes to you to uh, Cabrera, you know, the, when the ball is put in play, it looks like he's he's making the right things happen. But um, yeah. the walk percentage, man, I the the command, he just he doesn't have it yet. And um, I think if if he can actually like get the walks under control, like this is the type of guy that could potentially be the ace for um, for the Marlins. The Marlins. Sure. Dude, their 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 rotation. If they have a healthy rotation, they can. They're stacked, dude. The, you know, you got uh, per, Yuri Perez, which unfortunately he's out for the season. Um, you got Cabrera, Max Meyer. You know, if weather pans out, weather's pans out, dude. That that's a young, young, really good rotation. Six plus dude. What happened to him? Uh, he keeps on getting hurt, man. So he got traded from the Phillies to the Marlins. In the That's real music, so and he just keeps on getting hurt. I think he had Tommy John or you know something, something like that. It was definitely an arm thing, and um, he's actually pitching right now. You know, he's not really on anyone's radar yet, but in, hey, you know, in, it's it's it sucks because all their young pitchers are getting hurt. 
And I don't know if that has anything to do with, um, you know, their their conditioning or, you, you, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what it is, man. But every year, one of their top prospecting, you know, top prospect pitchers is either hurt or, you know, surgery or I don't know what, man. But uh, you just I, I just want to see a Marlins healthy rotation with these, these at least these three guys, right? Perez, Cabrera. And Myers, dude, those three, man, they and they throw heat, bro. They throw heat, and and I want to see that. Maybe that's why they're getting hurt, huh? Because they're throwing really hard. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Edward Cabrera has only started one game so far and only issued one walk. Um, that's that's good to that's see. Good you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you know. Walks has been his Achilles heel, you know, just like it is with a lot of different pitchers. So only seeing one walk in six innings pitch so far. I like that, man. Uh, it also came with 10 Ks while allowing five hits and, and one earned run. Yep. Uh, you know, like I said, if he can limit the walks, you know, I, I feel like he is a must add in all fantasy formats, you know, points, yeah. categories, whatever. He has the upside for it. Um, but err on the side of caution. Cabrera's never pitched more than 128 innings in a season. So if he does secure a spot in the rotation, he could probably lose some playing time down the down the stretch if the Marlins decide to limit his innings, which you know they they could because they're not going to be in a playoff race. You know, I, I highly doubt that they're gonna be one of the contenders, you know, especially being in the same division as the Braves and, and the Phillies, even though the Braves lost Spencer Strider and, and the the Phillies are kind of like off to a little rough start. I still yeah. think that both of those teams are better than the Marlins, you know, and you never know. Baseball is a, a weird sport where literally anything could happen. We saw the Nationals win the World Series in 2018 when they all they really had was Max Scherzer and um, and uh, Steven Strasburg, you know, and yeah. their line wasn't like any crazy good. They had Trey Turner and Anthony Rendon. Uh, they lost Bryce Harper before that. He was already gone. He was in Philly by that time, you know. So yeah. it, we've seen crazier things happen, you know. The, yeah. the Royals won the World Series in 2016, you know, when they had us and and Hosmer and uh, Whit Merrifield, who's now on the Phillies. You know, that's crazy, man. <laughs> crazy to think that, when you yeah, think of it, really the, is the Nationals and the Royals right now. They're like you know. Well, actually, the Royals are actually doing pretty good again. They're actually starting to hit. But, you know, last year, 2023, like these were two of the worst teams in baseball. So, no. and it's happened to baseball, man. You could see the Yankees go 82 and 80 in 2023 and then go on to make it to the World Series in 2024. I, I'm actually yeah. predicting the, the Yankees and Dodgers in the World Series this year. Really? Yeah. That's my hmm. that's my question. That's an interesting. Uh, Dude, imagine the yeah. ratings. Imagine the, yeah. viewers, the viewership on, on the that powers type. that be are going to make it happen, bro. <laughs> yeah, highly possible. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and I'd like to see that. That'd, that'd be nice. Making it to the World Series is going to make it so much easier for the Yankees to re-sign Juan Soto for a long-term deal yeah. as well. Yeah, true. And he's true. doing really good in New York, man. He's doing really good. Just like I predicted. We, just like I we, predicted. Yeah. You, call, you called it, bro. You called it. It's it's that ballpark, man. It's perfect for his type of swing, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we have reached the end of the show. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button, and uh, we'll be back next week. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks, guys. Later. <laughs>